Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Hill Holiday, for having us. When uh, HGTV launched nearly 20 years ago, a lot of people asked the question, what sane individual is going to sit there and watch paint dry and grass gr grow 24 hours a day? But uh, we very quickly became the authority when it comes to home, when it comes to landscaping, when it comes to design, renovation, and I knew that I would forget to click. I have to multitask. In fact, uh, we are that authority now, and we just had our highest rated quarter of all time, which is extremely exciting. We're very proud of that. And early on, our content focused very much on the physical house, uh, if, our behavior, if you will, if you go back to the behavior plus belief earlier today. We were very much focused on the house, and that's what helped us become that authority. At the time, our network almost looked like the television version of Architectural Digest. All of our shots were, were very beautiful, very pristine, and very perfect. In fact, there were times when you wouldn't even necessarily see any people in the shots. It was very much a, a look at a beautiful magazine spread, if you will. And that really did help us become the authority early on. When more recent days, we have evolved and we are far more focused on uh, the emotional connection that our audience has with, our, uh, with their home, and more importantly, the value of that emotional connection. We're no longer just about perfect houses, but we're about the very real people who live in those homes. Through the lens of home, we allow people to celebrate their families and celebrate their memories. And by tapping into the emotional connection that they have, we create a level of engagement that is unsurpassed by any other. It's helped us build a fan base that is very proudly addicted to their HGTV. Just backstage, someone said to me, I'm addicted. And I said, that's great, I'm about to say that, because that's their word, not ours. They use the word addicted. It's an engaged audience that also stands up and pays attention when their HGTV introduces them to new products and to new services. The depiction of home is now very lived in and comfortable. We're providing our audience with a mirror of themselves with the stories that we tell. It's an opportunity for, for them to escape, for them to be entertained, for them to be inspired, and to be just a little bit more informed at the end of the day. It's authentic, it's organic, and it's real. Most recently, we launched a Love Home campaign to give our audience a way to celebrate and share that emotional connection that they have to home with the world. We're asking our audience to send in photos of their homes, but we're not asking for sofas and chair photos. We're looking for pictures of families celebrating home, celebrating their memories of home. The campaign has been active since January quietly, but we've only been national with the campaign for the last month or so, and we're already up to 115,000 uploads. By going to the I Love, I'm sorry, I Heart HGTV blog, uh, our audience has a chance to participate in this campaign and potentially even see themselves in our national campaign. Here's a quick look. Home. It's more than just an address. If you're lost in a this is what home means to you. Like stone, it's family firsts, big events, and the small moments. Carry on, carry on. Now this is home. Capture the moment and show us. Take a photo, tag it, and share the love of all things home. HGTV, love home. Keep the photos coming. So the second big component of our strategy is also about people, but in this case, it's about the passionate experts we bring into our viewers' homes each and every day. Now more than ever, we have a stable of talented, charismatic experts whom our audience really, really trusts. They're kind of like the knowledgeable friend next door, that friend in the neighborhood you, whom you can always turn to when you have questions about your home. And because we cater to a highly upscale and highly educated audience, we can't just go down to central casting and find a pretty face and say, now go pretend to be an expert. Our audience would see right through it. Our, our experts are real, they are not fake. They're the real deal and our audience knows it. They, are, they know their stuff and they're passionate about their craft. And that's why the programming team leaned forward one day when we saw a very rough sizzle reel of two guys two, who had their own construction firm in New Jersey. When we watched the reel, we uh, saw expertise, we saw charisma, we saw charm, we saw fun, we saw humor, we saw playfulness, and we saw two pretty good looking guys to boot. It was pretty nice. Let's bring out the cousins. Anthony Carino and John Colinari. Joined by Stacy Shepard. 
Thanks, guys. So Thanks for having us. Anybody who knows me knows that there's always a project going on at my house, so I'm psyched to have this conversation <laughs> with you guys, and we'll talk more after. Um, so Freddie just mentioned you guys put together a sizzle reel and sent it into um, these guys to take a look at. So what made you guys want to be on air, and then... Freddie, what made what was it about them that <laughs> decided to put you on? Very fortunately, on the the, uh, the volume uh, was not good enough for for your viewing pleasure, so you guys spared us the the embarrassment. <laughs> um, it was actually a friend that approached us. Uh, we had thrown a charity event um, at a building that we had finished, and um, <clears throat> real estate market was horrible. You know, we were doing anything we could, so if we could do some you know some social good in combination with trying to sell some condo units and. She was overhearing some conversations, and we were super passionate and continue to be about this particular building that we happen to both live in now. Um, so she said, you guys need to be on TV. And we were, all right, yeah. So does everybody else need to be on TV. Um, so she convinced us to let her, let her you know, follow us around for a day. She basically shot it all on a little flip cam, cold called the production company, who then said, OK, there's something here. They shot a little sizzle. Yeah. Ten months later, we heard from this man, and now we're on the crazy train. Yeah. So what <laughs> and that is we exactly are the crazy train. how you get a reality show. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody should do. <laughs> so clearly, there's a lot of personality here, and Huge. that must have played into <laughs> what you saw in that reel. So what was it about these guys that wanted you to put them on the air? Well, we have plenty of people who come through our offices who have big personalities who could be TV stars, and we have a, a handful of people who come through our offices that are experts in their field but don't necessarily need to be on TV. And, uh, and in the rare instance where the two moons align and we can deliver our audience a very authentic experience where they can learn about something and get inspired about their home and yet have a great time with the talent along the way, it's a no-brainer to us. So we moved quickly to launch Kitchen Cousins because at the time we wanted a, uh, a, a kitchen series. It's one of our most popular topics that our audience wants to know about. Most people hate their kitchens in general. So, um, so we thought, let's call it Kitchen Cousins because that's kind of funny. Yeah. And what? that'll catch oh, and, on. And, and the online audience loved it. Yeah. 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 Well, obviously, no Kitchen Cousins joke, was right. successful, mm -hmm. and you've moved on to Cousins on Call. Yep. So you've evolved sort of beyond that. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. I'm Anthony Carino. I knew that would happen. That's Four right. generations of my family have grown up in New Jersey. So there's a lot of us. But I've always been closest to my cousin, John. So 10 years ago, when my dad and I started Brunelleschi Construction, we brought John on to help us design and build amazing kitchens. Everyone has a kitchen they dream about. It's our job to make it real. They said when you click, there's no turning back. That's right. <laughs> Mike did say that. So. They were not joking about that. Um, the point I wanted to make yeah. that was that... Because these guys are the real deal, when we first launched Kitchen Cousins, we decided to sort of tell their story in the open of the show because we wanted the audience to actually uh, believe that they are the real deal. They really do have their own construction firm. And so we wanted, uh, wanted to show that. So let's play the video. Oh, wait, we did that yeah. already. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, it's, it's not easy running that construction company, <laughs> running all over with these guys. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it's been a blast. I mean, we, I don't think at this point we wouldn't do it any other way. It's... It's nice to be able to do something positive on TV and, and have your work noticed instead of, you know, some of the usual press that New Jersey gets. So, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been amazing. Yeah. So obviously, it's been noticed because you guys have a big partnership now with Ellen. So can you talk a little bit about that? I'll let you guys talk a little bit about that. You know, you know her better than I do at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Well, I mean, that's been. I mean, really, when we started out the show, I think it caught us by surprise that we would get to that level. I think when you get to the Ellen level, that's when you kind of, that's, yeah. that's your that's bar, a it, it's, that's a big deal. And uh, the first one that we did with her, that was a big test. The Ellen people, that was a big test for them. They never really did anything like this. They were kind of taking a chance. And when they saw that first special, the reaction from the homeowner, reaction through Twitter, Facebook, on all feeds, how people were so involved in it, they wanted more, it kind of was a perfect partnership. Where they said, you know what, these two guys have something here. Let's maybe make this into a couple other instances that we can give away, you know, this, this big experience mm -hmm. because people were so involved in it. 
And so it's evolved from there into undercover overhaul. It has. I had to have a quick clip of Ellen if yep. I could show it. Is yep. that all right? This is you just a little clip. bit of what. You don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. <laughs> right. We won't be able to get to the next slide. If when you I don't, want so. video, I can't have it. When I can't have video, I can't do it. Um, then anyway, this is just a little clip that showcases uh, how the partnership worked out. Obviously, we love we love our relationship with Ellen because she has a very large voice in the social space as well, not only the celebrity factor. But here's a look at how that went down. Last week, we met Megan and Jonathan, an incredible couple from Point Pleasant, New Jersey, who risked their lives during Hurricane Sandy to save others. Take a look. Anthony, Joan, come on out here. <gasps> so Anthony and John are here. And uh, what a coincidence, huh, that they'd be here and your <laughs> house was destroyed and everything. So uh, why don't you tell them what you've been doing? So basically, we got to your house on Monday morning. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. And uh, <laughs> that, is, that, that yeah. is your home. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. So we, we yeah. got right into the demolition. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you. Um, but the good news is that we're going to be building it all back. Oh, my God. Um, and uh, we've got no, one. They were just going to demo it for you. So, <laughs> so for the last week, the Kitchen Cousins and their crew of over 40 people have been working around the clock, literally around the clock, completely renovating uh, and making over their home. Let's check in with Jeannie, who's outside, and uh, Megan and Jonathan are there with the Kitchen Cousins. Everybody, hi. Hello. Hey, hey. Hi. Let's drop the banner, and let's see what it looks like now. You ready? Drop that banner. <laughs> Woo! Check well, out your new oh living room. Oh so guys, oh look at that. <laughs> that's uh -huh. amazing. And that's exactly it. So that the first thing you notice, that's that. no longer a three-season oh room. God. That is a completely usable dining room. <laughs> if you're watching at home, log on to our website to find out how you can help the Hurricane Sandy relief effort and make sure you catch, uh, check out Kitchen Cousins' new show, Cousins on Call, premiering January 2nd on HDTV. Y'all are amazing. Congratulations. Happy Thanksgiving. And thank I want to thank Jennifer Lawrence. Thanks, Ellen. Happy Thanksgiving. Be kind to one another. Bye, everybody. So Undercover Overhaul is becoming a 10-pole series on HGTV, so talk about that a little bit. Well, from what we did with Ellen and the, and the families who were really in need, we thought that we could take this even to the higher level. First it was Kitchen Cousins, then it was uh, Cousins on Call, and we said, let's make this a much bigger deal where we can actually help a lot of people, and I think it came a lot out of their experience with the Sandy, uh, the Sandy episode. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it goes without saying, Hurricane Sandy hit our backyard. It's, yeah. I mean, the whole East Coast is ridiculous. Um, but not to, to focus on that so much, just doing good overall, you know, you, you feel those episodes and, you know, the homeowner's passion is real. And mm -hmm. if you watch our show, you know, we have trouble with emotions sometimes too. So there's we tears. We cry a little bit sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so, you know, this, this show is now going to be an hour and um, you know, we're just we're able to do more good with with uh, the tools that we have. Um, so it's it's going to be you know just the kind of the next natural progression for the yeah. show. So let's talk a little bit about how you promote all of this. We were talking sure. um, back in the green room about sort of what your social footprint was before <laughs> you guys were on HGTV yeah. and how you used it for your business back in New Jersey. And I'll talk a little bit about how you use that now to connect with your fans and pr help promote the show and HGTV. Well, I, I think overall our fans really want as much content as possible. They, they do look at us, as Freddie was saying earlier, as the experts in the field. Mm -hmm. So when they come on to our Facebook or they're asking us any Twitter questions, they are constantly want to know, what would you guys do? What, what are your and suggestions? And they're specific, you know. Mm -hmm. Very, very specific. Pictures of the room. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they, so you they want the advice. You might see some tweets from me soon <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. about my latest Let project. Uh, Share your yeah. address right now. We'll come. <laughs> And it, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you know, you'll definitely see, I mean, through our, our Cousins TV, it's very focused primarily on the show. You go to our, our personal, you know, Twitter handles, they want to know just about Anthony and I. They want to know who we are. I mean, I got engaged in the show, so I mean, that, that, that I kind of let everyone into a little bit of, of my world there. Um, but it's, 
it's very interesting to see how engaging our fans are. And I think HGTV fans mm -hmm. are very engaging. And, and that's the biggest thing. Yeah, early on we put them on like Design Star, which was our biggest tent pole so that we could introduce them mm -hmm. to, the, to the world. We went on to include a lot of celebrities actually in the episodes of their shows so that we could take advantage of the celebrities yeah. social push. The like celebrity the stuff. The Go celebrity ahead, stuff yeah. was really the most interesting because what, what we noticed was that all of, our, all of our celebrity episodes rated higher. There was always a spike in ratings. Um, and there was always a, an online spike in conversation. Our, our uh, Facebook insights, for example, would jump into, you know, we, we would trend around 60,000, um, you know, viral reach. We would jump instantly 250,000 uh, mm -hmm. people in terms of viral reach. Um, but it didn't translate into followers. So their fans w did not instantly become our fans. But they definitely watch that show. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you were to extrapolate out and make a few assumptions, but the, with this, with the the spike in ratings, it was it was really interesting to watch that kind of unfold. Yeah, I think it had to do with both the celebrity factor and the promotional value, but also the ability to have you know the Ellen posting on her website. Oh, or the Kardashians. You can't you can't buy the you can't the buy 8.1 million exposure. Twitter yeah. followers. That's good. And, and, and you guys have had a lot of Twitter parties as well, and and you've done some sort of goofy. Uh, posted some goof goofy images to get people to pay attention. Yeah, we have a lot of fun live tweeting the shows um, because, you know, in 22 minutes, how much of a renovation do you really get to see? So we're constantly telling people what's going on behind the scenes mm -hmm. and, you know, how long it actually took. And mm -hmm. um, Yeah, and for Anthony and us, I mean, we, we can play off each other, especially in, in, the, in, in the Twitter world. And we can be there. We can give that insight. And, and, and the, there you go. Didn't know you included that. They one. share their personal lives. We, yeah. do, we, we do share our, our personal lives, and, and that is, you know, a, a kind of a, a fine line. Mm -hmm. um, we want to let people in, but at the same time, you, you do want to have that, that that privacy. So it is a difficult thing to yeah. kind of go back. But you're so. I mean, we've been talking a lot about Twitter, but your social strategy and your whole digital strategy really goes well beyond that. Can you talk a little bit more about what you're doing with Facebook and Pinterest and uh, specifically on HGTV, we have a, a huge, a huge uh, footprint in those uh, in those arenas. We we have a lot of shows where we'll let the content actually be driven by sort of Pinterest uh, Pinterest efforts and who wins and so forth. So we've done a lot of that with your show, with the cousin shows in particular. It's been really focused on Twitter promotion and Facebook. Yeah, Twitter and Facebook are our two main channels. And so basically, what we did um, when we stopped down from our last season is uh, I created a diagram on an iPad app that I have because it was getting out of control and we were ragged between doing the construction on the show and trying to get the content up and everything. So we really wanted to just make sure we were focusing in the right areas. So we've got Facebook and Twitter as the two main approaches to getting information out. And then we get a lot of all our, our show opens we load on a, on a YouTube channel and then feed the other two channels. Yeah. Um, we also hired somebody for content um, management. So we'll feed them. You know, they're not, they're not curating content. You know, they'll post articles from House or any other additional design blogs and they'll facilitate interactions back with the main HGTV channels who is also very good about then you know, replying. Because um, what we found is within our community, um, you know, talking to Genevieve, talking to David Bromstead, talking to Meg Caswell on Twitter, on Facebook, those design conversations, those are what spur additional followers for, of for each of us. Because somebody watches my show, our show, they're, they're interested in design. So I'm talking to David Bromstead, now they're interested in it, you know, or vice right. versa. So, so cross-promotion uh, yeah, with all of the talent on air. And it's not about promoting each other's shows. It's design conversation. Hey, what did you do to solve this problem? What did you, that, guys, that episode was great. What was that product you used? Just simple, normal, because we are actually, a lot of us are friends off, off the air. So it, it's, uh, it's interesting to see that as Con well. Content is the driver, I think. And the fact that we deal with such a small slither of content on HGTV, it, you, the, the talent do really speak one to the other. They are, in, in a way, um, they're, they're kindred spirits in that, in that genre that we deal with. Cool, do you wanna show yeah, one yeah, more one video? Yeah, one more video that I'll just show quickly. We've, we're launching a, uh, something on our website, uh, hgtv.com, about 113 million uh, 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 average monthly page views. But here's a quick video of where the guys are coming to the rescue in sort of a short form way. It's a real quick video. Hi Anthony, my name is Karen, I'm from Colorado Springs and I would like to install a doorbell into my front door and I have no idea where to start. Do you have any tips or suggestions? 
Absolutely, Karen, not a problem. The good thing about this question, it is super, super easy. No wiring required whatsoever. Why? Wireless doorbells. This will allow you to get yourself a doorbell but not have to open up any walls, damage and or repair anything. We wanna try and hide it so rather than placing it prominently in a hallway under an entry table like this is great. And it's simply plug and play. This is gonna go right into the wall outlet, like so. And that's it. Now, we can head over to the front door with our switches and I'll show you how those go in. Um, in this particular case, we've got a dark door. You want people to find your doorbell, so I say use the opposite color. Go with the white so people see it. Well, this will be your favorite part. You don't even have to screw the doorbell in if you don't want to because they all come with double-sided tape. Press it firmly to the back of the unit. Hold it for a few seconds. Well, your doorbell works. And then simply press this anywhere you'd like against your door frame. I would hold it for a good I don't know, 15 to 30 seconds, um, just because you want the adhesion to really take uh, place and hold. All right, Karen, so you think that's easy enough for you to handle? I think it might be. Thank you so much, Anthony. Awesome. Great talking with you. Take care now. You too. And you can do that, Sage. Uh, I know. Right? Really. So <laughs> obviously, call you that's for that one, one expert installation. Yeah. Oh, my God. The goal is to have them everywhere, obviously. <laughs> So I want to, um, we have a little bit of time left. I don't want to take one of these questions um, from Twitter. And I think a lot of what we've heard today is, you know, it's all about the content and making the content relevant. And that's when people want to participate. So um, I've got a question here from Noah who says, um, what's your secret to making content so authentic and personal? Well, I, I mean, for us, it's, this is who we are. We are not actors. We are not people that really sought out TV. It, it, it truly fell in our laps. And we are giving the advice today on a television show that I would give to any of my customers if they walked in, into my office. Yeah. And that's what we always tell people. We say we are the true authentic talent that, that is there. there. There is no, you know, let's make up a drama or when, I'm gonna when, get in a fight with my cousin. <laughs> we don't do anything like that. When the season ends, we, you know, we get up at 6 a.m. and go to the office. So it's, you know, it's, we're, we, we do it, you know, day, day in and day out and uh, we really enjoy it. I mean, the, the, the first day of shooting ever, uh, our producer, Nick, you know, we walked up and we had the tools and we're ready to smash this woman's kitchen apart and looked at Nick and all the cameras and, all right, what do we do? You know, and he just said, look, why don't you just treat this person like they're your client and we'll fix it as we go along. And we kind of never had to fix it because it's, you know, we're not acting like John said. It's, it's, it, they're just catching the way we, we treat people on a regular well, I, basis. I think it's, I think it's our, our, our raw we emotions. We just do it a little bit yeah, faster. It, it, it truly <laughs> is. It, what you see is, is our raw emotions that, that come out. Yeah. You know, I mean, like Anthony said, he joked about it, that we get emotional. Our show has become a very emotional show because we're helping so many people in need. And we get emotional because we care. I mean, it means a lot to us to give a family a new home, a new kitchen, whatever you're doing, it's, it's an amazing experience. That's well, it's obviously why your fans have been so connected with you. Thanks you guys so much. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Great. Thank you. Appreciate Happy it. Thanks you. guys, thank you very much.